webinar on engaging with digital ecosystems. My name is Claire Newstead and I'm an analyst here at Planet Retail RNG in our e-commerce insights team. Uh, a few quick points before we start. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please submit them in the GoToWebinar question section and I will answer as many as I have time for at the end of the session and any that I do, do not get around to answering will be ended. Also, today's session will be recorded for you to view again in the future. So a quick overview of Planet Retail RNG. Uh, we are a global intelligence and advisory business uh, focused on retail. We have offices in Boston, Frankfurt, Mumbai and London, which is where I am based. And we track thousands of leading retailers uh, and identify future trends and disruptors of the retail market. And one of the things we do with these data and insights is produce reports to help our customers win in the world of digital retail. And today, this presentation is focused on our latest e-commerce report, Engaging with Digital Ecosystems. Before I get into the main bulk of today's report, I wanted to give a quick overview of some of Planet Retail RNG's frameworks and how these have led us to developing this specific report. At Planet Retail RNG, we are really focused on identifying future trends and disruptors of the retail market. And so with this in mind, we developed a framework for identifying the future drivers of change that we then segment into different areas that overall are called STEEP. So STEEP stands for Society, Technology, Economy, Industry and Policy. And we use the variables that we identify to help forecast future trends and growth areas that result in the new set of implications for suppliers, manufacturers and retailers. This then led us to develop our four winning strategies that are key areas of investment and prioritization for retailers and suppliers. Our four winning strategies are store of the future, which is focusing on how retailers need to reinvent their stores to cope with the increasing pressure from e-commerce and the increased desire from consumers for more convenience based formats. Supply chain and fulfillment focuses on how the supply chain is being disrupted by e-commerce, new consumer e expectations and technology, and how retailers and suppliers need to respond. Shopper engagement and retention focuses on how retailers and suppliers are having to engage with consumers in new ways in order to capture shortening attention spans and how they can drive return orders and loyalty. And the winning strategy that uh, we're focusing on today is engaging with digital ecosystems. Uh, sorry, the winning strategy that engaging with the digital ecosystems comes under is e-commerce and digital ecosystem management. And this focuses on how e-commerce is disrupting the retail landscape and how retailers need to build out expansive digital ecosystems to win. So within our e-commerce and digital ecosystem management report that we published at the end of last year, we identified 14 key capabilities that are needed to win in the future e-commerce landscape. And these range from fundamental capabilities needed for market survival to the most advanced capabilities that drive market leadership. The key capability that is of focus in today's presentation is engaging with digital ecosystems. This capability really comes off the back of retailers building out extensive digital ecosystems to win in the e-commerce market. And it is important that suppliers know how to engage across the whole digital ecosystem to maximize performance and strengthen retailer relationships. So as we go through to the presentation today, I will start by explaining the fundamentals of a digital ecosystem, including how and why retailers are quickly expanding them. We will then go on to how suppliers can break down retailers' digital ecosystems into more manageable focus areas for engagement and alignment. And finally, I will present how, retail, uh, how suppliers can build out their own ecosystems to take back consumer touch points from retailers and strengthen their propositions further. So with that, the first slide I wanted to show everyone is Planet Retail RNG's ecosystem framework. And the purpose of this framework is to demonstrate how retailers are expanding their operations beyond just commerce to drive viewership, uh, sales, revenue and scale. This includes everything from connected life uh, to loyalty and from media ent and entertainment to financial services. Very few retailers have fully built out digital ecosystems that cover all the sections shown on this slide. 
But the reason why retailers have and are building out their ecosystems is to try and create a captive network of services that boost consumer engagement and average spend. Equally, these platforms create new revenue streams that are more profitable than the online business. These revenue streams both offset, for example, fulfillment costs, and they also generate capital to invest in technology and innovation that will help improve and drive growth of an e-commerce business. This slide shows Amazon's digital ecosystem, one of the most built out in the world. And the reason I've included this is to really demonstrate how expansive these top e-commerce players' ecosystems are and how complex they can be to navigate for suppliers. Alibaba, JD and Walmart are the other retailers with the most built out ecosystems globally, but equally other smaller, more niche retailers are building out their ecosystems. Peapod, one of the top online grocers in the US, has recently expanded its loyalty scheme segment to include a new subscription service called PodPass Midweek that has customers pay a yearly subscription for free midweek deliveries. It has also developed a chat to chat chat to cart platform that allows consumers to more conveniently order products via text, voice and even emojis. So the purpose of this presentation is to show how these huge, expansive and complex ecosystems can be broken down into more manageable se segments for supplier engagement and alignment. Using Amazon as an example, its ecosystem spans across loyalty with its best in class prime membership program, Logistics with its various fulfillment programs. Commerce platforms with its variety of sites, including Amazon.com, Prime Now, Amazon Fresh, uh, Connected Life through its Alexa virtual assistant, and many, many more. And all of these present opportunity for suppliers to improve their businesses and maximize growth. So what makes up so what makes a digital ecosystem successful? And it's best to think about it in these four pillars. The first is an expansive value stack. This means that the retailer expands across multiple industries and businesses, which creates a unique economic model and integrates in, in the consumer's life. Secondly, data. Leveraging the data collected by these expansive value stacks for a complete end-to-end -end picture of individual consumers will be a significant growth engine for online retailers. Thirdly technology and innovation. In order to efficiently leverage all the useful data being collected, it really requires advanced technologies and capabilities. Research and development will also be instrumental in developing the best latest initiatives that support the retailer's operations. And finally, scale. This is really critical to success and fuels the other three pillars. Online retailers are able to scale much more quickly and easily than traditional store-based retailers. It is really important for suppliers to track retailers' ecosystem developments and expansion to identify future opportunities to grow their business. And there are three different methods to be aware of, of how retailers are expanding their ecosystems. Firstly, partnerships. The two partner bis businesses often have a financial agreement that results in integration of uh, operations, businesses and platforms. And in this way, they both gain expertise and new strengths and skills from the other business. An example is uh, JD.com strong partnership with Tencent, through which it has gained access to China's largest social platform, WeChat, that Tencent owns, and its million plus monthly users. Also, WeChat Pay, a top payment platform in China, again used by millions of Chinese consumers. Together, these enable JD to combine commerce, social platforms and payment to offer a seamless online experience. The second method is through mergers and acquisitions. This is a quick solution that allows retailers to quickly build out their ecosystems. For example, Walmart has had to rapidly respond to e-commerce disruption and the strength and pressure from Amazon and has therefore acquired several retailers and service platforms over the past two years. Its acquisition of pure play startup Jet.com enabled, enabled Walmart to gain a wealth of e-commerce expertise from Jet's leadership team, as well as innovative e-commerce concepts and algorithms. And more recently, uh, Walmart acquired Flipkart, who are the top e-commerce player in India, 
And this really gives Walmart strong entry into this hugely fast growing e-commerce market. Um, it gains local market knowledge from Flipkart's teams and expertise as well. And really knowing the reason behind an acquisition and as much as possible about the acquired company will really help suppliers understand a retailer's strategy and priorities. And finally, uh, retailers can expand their ecosystems through internal innovation, through creating new teams and businesses almost from scratch. And much of Amazon's digital ecosystem has been built out through this method. Internal, internal expansion and innovation really gives suppliers opportunities to work with retailers while they, while they are building out new teams across new industries. Uh, for suppliers, being part of trials and being the first to work with a new retailer team can really help cement relationships and stay ahead of competitors. So across the globe, we are seeing retailers continuously expanding their ecosystems in the three ways that I just mentioned. And this is making it ever more complex for suppliers to navigate the ecosystems. This Planet Retail RNG framework shown on this slide is a way for suppliers to break down the retailer ecosystem into more manageable focus areas for alignment and engagement. Suppliers, internal e-commerce teams can equally be structured to support these four focus areas. And these focus areas are the first, sales execution. And you can really think about this as the commerce centric part of an ecosystem beyond just commerce platforms. So choice, search, commerce platforms, online to offline and connected life are all key focus areas for implementing retailing excellence. Secondly, marketing touch points. All these ecosystem components can be utilized by suppliers to advertise their brand and products to new and existing customers. Search, commerce platforms, O2O and Connected Life should be covered separately by both supplier sales and marketing teams. Media and entertainment, marketing and data management, loyalty, social platforms and financial services are also opportunities for suppliers to market themselves. The next focus area is operations, and this covers both logistics and local services that generate opportunity for suppliers to align and integrate their internal processes uh, to a retailer's priorities and the services they offer. And finally, the focus, final focus area is technology monitoring. So any new uh, innovative technology or concept must really be monitored by suppliers and then assessed to identify any future impact or opportunities. There is also an opportunity here for suppliers to form early partnerships with retailers on these new innovations that will help them stay ahead of competition and see bigger long-term gains. So the thing that makes this framework so relevant for all suppliers is it covers from the e-commerce fundamentals to the new innovative ways suppliers can work with retailers across their ecosystem. For each focus area, there are from the basics of e-commerce operations to the most advanced ways suppliers can engage. So starting with sales execution alignment. The first segment is choice. And a retailer builds choice on its platform through expanding assortment, um, offering exclusive products and expanding its own private label ranges. And this is a big threat to suppliers with many more products and brands to compete with. This means that, this means that engagement with uh, the choice segment of a retailer's ecosystem is really vital. Uh, and differentiation of products and content will improve the attractiveness of products to consumers. Exclusive product, product agreements with retailers can also boost sales whilst building better relationships with the retailer. Second is search. And this is how retailers platforms allow consumers to search and browse for items. And is one of the basics for suppliers that will see huge rewards when optimized correctly. Use of descriptive and common search terms in product titles and descriptions will help boost products up search results which is really vital as 70% of consumers do not go past the first page of results and 35% actually click on the first item. Equally, engaging and informative hero images is important for the browsing aspect of search. Thirdly is retailers' commerce platforms. 
This relates to any site that the retailer owns or has financial interest in that sells products to an end consumer. These will often have different purposes and different consumer demographics. And so it creates an opportunity for suppliers to tailor products and pricing to suit the end consumer demographic. For example, Amazon Prime Now delivers a limited assortment of products to consumers within two hours for almost immediate gratification. The platform is really suited to smaller pack sizes that are likely to be needed immediately. This also makes it easier for Amazon to transport efficiently in a short period of time. Fourthly is online to offline. And this is how retailers are driving traffic from online stores to offline physical stores. They're leveraging their techno technological capabilities to create a more seamless transition between the two. Many retailers are opening physical stores to get closer to the consumer and to be able to offer more convenient pickup options and cut last mile delivery costs. And physical locations are a new channel opportunity for suppliers to work with a retailer. There is opportunity to leverage retailers' technological expertise uh, to integrate innovative digital components in the physical store. Um, an example of this would be uh, using augmented reality to drive an engagement um, with consumers. And finally, connected life. This covers both uh, voice assistants and programs uh, that integrate a retailer's brand into consumers' lives uh, through additional touch points. Voice device ownership is growing quickly with uh, many households across the globe owning devices that allow them to, uh, they can search, they can purchase products, they can ask questions, and they can say commands. And this um, has the opportunity to make, using voice makes this uh, more convenient and seamless in consumers' lives. And specifically focus on the search part of this, voice search and purchasing is really a big challenge for suppliers. Um, due to browsing being limited, voice will really require dedicated search optimization by suppliers in order to be the top of voice search. An advanced and innovative example of a brand improving its sales execution um, in line with a retailer's ecosystem is Home, Home Appliances brand Whirlpool, which is leveraging online players' connected life capabilities for its own advantages. It integrates Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant for voice control of its dishwasher, uh, Amazon Dash buttons for easy restocking of its fridges, and uh, Apple Watch for convenient laundry alert reminders. This uh, obviously requires new manufacturing capabilities, plus working closely with online players to um, optimize the use of their voice and connected life technologies. Uh, it both enables the brand to improve its products proposition and convenience to consumers um, and creates new ties with its retail customers, for example, Amazon. This is really just one specific more advanced call out as to how suppliers can engage with retailers ecosystems and relevancy to different suppliers will depend on how far along the e-commerce journey they are and here at planet retail rng we work with both suppliers and retailers to help build e-commerce strategies uh, prioritize which platforms to partner with um, and solve specific challenges whether you're at the start of your e-commerce journey or a more advanced and this is through our additional research and dedicated advisory team so please do not hesitate to get in touch if you want to talk to us more specifically about your business. Uh, so moving on to marketing touch points. So this slide really just demonstrates how different areas of a retailer's ecosystem can be leveraged by suppliers marketing teams uh, to boost brand awareness and sales and much more than just traditional marketing services. So search, commerce platforms, online to offline and connected life are included across both sales execution and marketing as both serve as opportunities to optimize sales content and as a way to advertise. And they need to be considered as these separate focus areas for suppliers. So specifically thinking about connected life, suppliers will need to develop new innovative ways to market their products and brands on voice devices 
as many retailers are reluctant to have specific advertising on their devices. Specific skills are a great, great way for brands to engage with consumers and drive brand awareness and sales. Media and entertainment is an area that retailers are increasingly focusing on to attract more consumers into their ecosystems. These are often seen as video and music platforms. Um, for example, in recent news, um, Walmart has been building speculation that it will be moving into video streaming um, with a recent hire of uh, former CEO of streaming site Epix. And these media and entertainment platforms provide suppliers with a new way to advertise and market their products and brands uh, to a large number of consumers and viewers. Equally, many online retailers have their own marketing services and understanding the different use cases of retailers marketing services, where an advert is going to be displayed and who is going to see it is really key. For example, Amazon offers both Amazon marketing services. Uh, this offers sponsored search results that boost products up search results pages um, and create headline ads that directly drive sales. On the other hand, Amazon Media Group is also offered by Amazon, but should be used by suppliers to drive more brand awareness and reach rather than direct sales. This is due to it creating displays and video adverts on Amazon's web pages and other third party sites. Equally, uh, within this marketing and data management, online retailers collect a vast amount of shopper data that requires them to have dedicated data management teams. Leveraging this data to inform current and future marketing content will ha really help suppliers target specifically their consumer demographic, as well as creating personalized content. Retailer loyalty programs are another marketing touchpoint. Loyalty programs are used by retailers to drive retention. Inclusion of uh, suppliers products within a retailer's loyalty program, such as um, having prime eligible products can really help boost sales and awareness to these members specifically. Social platforms are something that has grown immensely over the past five years and now are really becoming a key part of a retailer's ecosystem and another area for suppliers to market their products. Social platforms leverage the social aspects of consumers' lives to drive browsing and purchasing on a retailer's platform. With uh, reviews and recommendations on these platforms being a big influencer over future purchases, it's really an important place to gain traction. Finally, financial services. Many retailers are creating their own financial reward programs um, and even their own payment platforms. Although this may not be thought of as a classic marketing platform, using uh, a retailer's payment platform can help advertise a brand to consumers that are used to using this payment platform and it's embedded in their lives. Similarly, as for sales execution, I wanted to call out a best in class more advanced case study to demonstrate how much potential engaging with retailers digital ecosystems really has. So Amazon's media and entertainment platform Prime Video is a key component of Amazon's ecosystem as it gives Prime members non-retail benefits for being a subscriber. This improves the attractiveness of Prime for consumers and increases switching costs. Amazon has been improving Amazon Video through some really big contracts recently including uh, Thursday night streaming of NFL games in the US and in the UK exclusive streaming of 20 Premier League matches from 2019. And I think the deals just really demonstrate Amazon's investment and experimentation with this video platform. It really provides great opportunity for brands to reach a huge set of viewers with advertisements. And I think just ensuring the products and message are tailored to the viewer demographic will see the best results. Video also allows brands to create shop, shoppable content that, that can be integrated in a video. And Diageo actually partnered with Amazon Prime to produce uh, 20 minute travel videos. Uh, these go around the world, um, looking at different bars uh, and really showcasing Diageo's spirit brands while telling a story. And embedded in the videos are links to Diageo's uh, e-commerce website, 
And this just creates a really low friction way for Diageo to advertise its brand and products. The third focus area for suppliers is operations, which includes the logistics and local services segments of the retailer ecosystem. So local services is how a retailer offers programs to a specific location um, and services may differ between geographics. For suppliers, um, this presents opportunity for tailored products to the local market needs and trends. Um, they can offer more premium delivery services, such as uh, home installation for large appliances. And I think this is really key for smaller brands as well, looking to start their e-commerce journey. A good option can be to limit delivery to local areas where nearby where warehouses and stores are based, uh, just to begin with, which limits fulfillment expenses, um, but allows uh, smaller brands to build up their online capabilities gradually to ensure all orders can be met and service is maintained. Logistics is focused on the process of transporting products to the consumer and is an area of really high investment and focus by nearly all online retailers as logistics is really a source of many profitability and efficiency challenges. Therefore, um, online retailers have dedicated teams, programs and services around logistics. And these can often be used by suppliers to improve their own logistics operations. It can help speed up their uh, help speed up supplies delivery times and make supply chains more time and cost efficient. So logistics partnerships between suppliers and retailers is a really great way for suppliers to learn from and utilize a retailer's logistics operations. A couple of examples, um, Amazon Vendor Flex sees Amazon operate within suppliers warehouses. Uh, this was first introduced a few years ago in a joint initiative with P&G, which is actually a key example of an early partnership really benefit benefiting a supplier. And through Vendor Flex, suppliers gain access to Amazon's advanced fulfillment capabilities, while Amazon saves on the cost of owning and operating its own warehouses. It improves efficiencies with removing the step in the supply chain of products being transferred from the supplier warehouse to a retailer's. And another example on a different continent is in China. Um, Danone is partnering with JD.com to utilize its logistics operations um, and supply chain management capabilities. And this is in a, a shared warehouse. Um, again, Danone gets access to JD's technologies and expertise around logistics, and these will really help them both together drive efficiencies, um, inventory management capabilities, transportation capabilities, and many, many more. So the final focus area um, of a retailer's digital ecosystem is technology monitoring. And this includes the technology, research and development and an innovation areas of a retailer's ecosystem. E-commerce operations require a great deal of innovations and new initiatives to stay ahead of the competition, um, improve operations, uh, drive profitability and make more platforms more attractive to consumers. And the technology innovations coming out of a retailer's research and development teams affects all the other areas of the ecosystem that we've talked through and is therefore really vital for suppliers to monitor and then assess to see how new developments may affect their processes. Um, it may affect products and pricing, uh, packaging, labeling, and so much more in the future. Uh, just to give an example, new voice capabilities uh, present both marketing and sales execution opportunities for suppliers. And automation, for example, may require new packaging and labeling um, to comply with the new technologies. So really monitoring new developments um, is really vital. And it also, as I've mentioned before, presents opportunity to form early partnerships that can uh, see suppliers. You could get best pricing agreements through early these early partnerships, um, good positioning, and equally get an early sales volume lead. So now that we've broken down the ecosystem into the four more manageable focus areas, and we've gone through each segment individually, demonstrating um, for each, there is just a wealth of opportunity for supplier engagement. I wanted to spend uh, the next few minutes just talking about how important it is to engage 
with not just one part of a retailer's ecosystem, but across all the different segments. And this infographic is an easy way to visualize the whole retailer ecosystem for suppliers and can be used within internal teams for navigation of a retailer's ecosystem. So this slide is an example of a brand working across a retailer's ecosystem with positive results, such as being one of the best selling brands on Amazon. And this example is from Cohen, who is a third party electronics brand selling its products on Amazon. Uh, just to call out a few engagement examples, um, within sales execution, the brand is using video in its product page to uh, differentiate from other brands, and it really showcases the quality and the story of its products. It has both informative and descriptive product titles um, that cover all the key functions of the products that are important to consumers and equally may be used by consumers in a search um, query. Cohen has also partnered with Amazon to produce Alexa-enabled speakers, um, improving the attractiveness of these products and making them more convenient to use. The brand uses Fulfillment by Amazon, a logistics service offered to third-party sellers from Amazon that sees suppliers send products to an Amazon Fulfillment Center, have them delivered to consumer, uh, customer services managed and returns handled, and this is all by Amazon. And this ensures that the Cohen products are Prime eligible, um, really making them more attractive to the vast number of Prime members um, due to fast and free shipping. So with this example of a brand engaging across a lot of Amazon's ecosystem, it can seem quite confusing as to how suppliers should prioritize each segment of the retailer's ecosystem as understandably and realistically not all can be launched at once. Therefore, this slide shows how the ecosystem segments can be prioritized by brands. These sections are based on how much each segment directly affects sales, how much focus and investment a segment is getting by a retailer, how much opportunity the segment presents for brands to engage, and whether the segment has potential to disrupt supplier operations in the future. So starting with uh, must win, these are the ecosystem components that are fundamental for success and directly affect sales. So choice, search, commerce platforms, marketing and data management and loyalty are key for consumers uh, being able to find products easily on a retailer's site, uh, for growing a customer base and to ensure loyalty and reordering of products. Logistics is equally important for consistent, profitable supply chain and fulfillment capabilities. Next, invest for growth, a really high investment and fast growing areas of retailers ecosystems. Um, for suppliers to engage and tap into these will often require a higher initial investment, but really have the potential to see greater rewards in the future. Uh, all these areas that include um, online to offline, connected life, media and entertainment and social platforms have the potential to disrupt the retail landscape going forward requiring new internal capabilities by suppliers. Next is small and, mighty, sorry, small and mighty. These are areas of a retailer's ecosystem that may present less opportunity for suppliers, but if used in an effective way, can see big rewards and equally can strongly differentiate a brand. Um, and included here are financial services and local services. And finally, uh, monitor this like explaining the technology monitoring focus area is for suppliers to track and monitor innovations being developed by retailers to assess how they may disrupt future processes and operations and to identify early partnership opportunities. Again, um, this infographic is a great way for suppliers internal teams to visualize the order in which they want to engage with a retailer's ecosystem. Uh, this will depend on how advanced the supplier is on their eco sorry on their e-commerce journey and equally ret uh, retailers ecosystems will continue to expand um, which will create new ways for suppliers to align and engage so a consequence of retailers building out their ecosystems as we've been talking about is they are creating new consumer touch points and equally taking over uh, consumer touch points that were traditionally controlled by suppliers um, 
just to explain, so a consumer touch point is uh, any point of contact that supplier or retailer has with a consumer. And this can be uh, from in the news to celebrity endorsements um, to connected products. And as you can see from the slide, there is just a huge number of touch points along the path to purchase. And these will just continue to increase. And I suppose the result of retailers capturing more consumer touch points is suppliers have less control over these consumer relationships. Um, and in turn, they have less control over data collection, um, brand loyalty, brand perception, um, pricing, and many, many more factors. So an option for suppliers to win back some touch points and create new ones is through building out their own digital ecosystems that span across these same segments as retailers. Um, developing new ways to provide consumers with services, products and offers that retailers are unable to will allow suppliers uh, to control better how their brand is portrayed and the customer service they offer. Equally, operating um, own services and consumer touch points will enable a supplier to capture their own shopper data and eliminate the challenges of obtaining data from retailers. Um, just to give a couple of examples, a potential supplier ecosystem component is direct to consumer platforms. Um, these really allow suppliers to showcase their own brand story, not on a retailer's website. Um, they can offer exclusive services and products. And equally, what we're seeing a lot is they're used to launch and test products on a smaller scale, um, allowing suppliers to gain feedback before rolling out to a wider audience. Um, equally, loyalty, just to call out an example, can be extended beyond just subscription services. And I think a great example of this is the Nike running app. Um, it drives loyalty through a social, not commerce platform. The app um, basically allows um, users to track their runs. They can meet up with um, other people running. Um, they can look at leaderboards. And it just creates a really new set of consumer touch points and it highlights Nike as an expert in this running category. Um, it's really a lifestyle app and so embeds the brand just further in consumers' lives. Um, and I suppose just one more example um, of a kind of great and innovative and more advanced development within a supplier digital ecosystem is Italian food company Barilla. It set up its own venture fund and innovation center called Blue uh, 1877, focused on food for the future. Uh, this dedicated team is expanding Barilla's own ecosystem and strengthening its ability to procure new capabilities and products, um, while also investing in really interesting early stage companies. Um, and suppliers with these dedicated innovation teams, will uh, this will help them keep up with the pace of change um, from both e-commerce and consumer expectations. Um, and I, I think in this really data and insights from the other areas of the supply business can help inform innovation priorities. So that brings us to the end of today's presentation. Um, and before we move on to questions, which please feel free to continue to submit, I just wanted to give a quick overview of today's presentation and the main points covered. So firstly, Retailers are expanding their digital ecosystems, uh, which is making them more complex and harder to navigate by suppliers. And suppliers can break down the ecosystem into more manageable focus areas for specific alignment and engagement. And finally, as a result of retailers building out their ecosystems, they are stealing consumer touch points from suppliers, which will require suppliers to build out their own ecosystems. If you'd like any of our experts here at Planet Retail RNG to help you specifically with building out and improving your e-commerce vision and strategy, uh, prioritizing which platforms to partner with or solve specific challenges that you are facing, then we do have additional research and a dedicated advisory team that can help you. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out by emailing info at planetretail.net. That's info at planetretail.net. So now I'll just have a look to see if we've got any questions and I'll answer a couple um, before we finish. Okay, so let me just have a look. 
So we've got um, a question on asking, where do we see retailers focusing their digital ecosystems going forward? Um, I think this is really does depend on the retailer and how advanced their ecosystems already are. Like I said, there are very few kind of fully scaled um, ecosystems across the globe. Um, but I think for top retailers like Amazon, advertising services will likely be a big focus going forward. Um, just because it's got such huge potential revenues, um, which like its cloud computing service, AWS, can support other areas of its e-commerce business. Equally, by offering um, its own advertising service, Amazon can drive more traffic to its own website um, by suppliers advertising their products on the Amazon platforms. Um, it also captures more of a supplier's advertising budget um, and hence just embeds suppliers more deeply in its ecosystem. Um, I think the other thing is voice uh, and how it's gonna be integrated in other devices. It really allows retailers to connect with consumers wherever they are in their home, cars, when they're out and about. Um, and I think it's something that suppliers really need to be aware of. Um, it's, it's a great opportunity to connect with consumers um, and it also makes the consumer more likely to use both a platform and a brand. Uh, so that's kind of bigger retailers. I'd say for smaller retailers that are just starting to build out their ecosystems, um, just the basics of expanding assortment through new supplier relationships will probably be a more short term focus and something that suppliers should be aware of. Um, and equally improving logistics operations, uh, I think this would be a key focus for all retailers as it's just one of the biggest profitability challenges. Um, so I think we have time for one more question and any others that I don't get around to answering today, um, we will email um, a response to you um, as soon as possible. So I have a question on uh, so with so many marketing opportunities, how does a supplier prioritize these or choose any to focus on? Um, so I think looking at the different opportunities from the framework of must win, invest for growth, small and mighty and monitor um, will really help to break down and prioritize the different marketing opportunities. Um, one of the kind of key basics, I think, that um, is any marketing service that boosts products up to top of search results is just really valuable and key. Um, but equally, if suppliers don't have the basics of search, um, choice, hero images, titles down, then the, re the reward won't be maximized. Um, and also, I think it just depends on how advanced the e-commerce team is internally and the category. So certain products such as household, uh, household items will be more suited to say, using subscription programs and loyalty um, offered by retailers. These will help generate regular orders and market their products as more convenient and easy to order. Um, and I think more advanced e-commerce teams may look to new methods to extend their reach, um, such as these media and entertainment platforms that we were talking about, or also voice skills. Um, but the framework, that I was talking about with the must win, invest to grow smaller, mighty and monitor. This is really useful and it's really important to use to think about prioritization. And um, if you have any more specific queries on this topic of prioritization, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, and again, that's at info at planetretail.net. So that's the end of today's webinar. I will make sure to email back responses to any questions I didn't get around to answering today. But thank you all very much for joining and have a lovely rest of your day.